All right, this is first grade, module four, lesson 23. And in this lesson, students are gonna be in interpreting two digit numbers in a variety of ways. And what this means is we are starting to lay the groundwork for students to regroup when they're adding using that standard algorithm. The idea is we want students to be able to see that 23, not only is it two tens, and three ones, but we also want students to be able to see that 23 could be seen as 110 and 13 ones, or 23 can be seen as 23 ones, no tens at all, 23 ones. So that's the kind of flexibility that this lesson is going to start introducing in our students. So let's get started. Let's do a couple of specific examples of what I'm talking about. So let's say we start with the number 30. And the idea is we can start thinking of 30 as three tens, three quick tens. And I'll go one, two, three. All right. So what does that mean? Well, that means we can think of it as three tens and zero ones. All right. Now, another way we can think of 30 is we could take one of these tens, these quick tens, and chop it up into 10 individual pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, gee whiz, I'm not quite fitting here, nine, 10. Okay, so we're gonna call that 10, <laughs> all right? So now what do I have? I still have the same amount. But now I have two tens and I have ten ones because you could see that here, two tens and ten ones. Now if I wanted to, I could chop up this one into individual pieces. We could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now what do I have? Well, I no longer have two ten, uh, yeah, two tens and ten ones. Now I only have one ten, so I'm going to put one ten. But now, how many ones do I have? Well, now I have twenty ones. So the idea is all of these are equal to thirty so far, but they look different. Let's do one last one down here. I could take this last quick ten and I can chop it up into 10 individual pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there's my 10 individual pieces there. So now, how many 10s do I have? I have no 10s. How many 1s do I have all together? Well, now I have 30. And so you can see how all of these equal 30, they just look very differently. We could repeat that process with 37 if we wanted to, and I'll kind of give a kind of an, an overview of what that might look like. Oh, let's do it in green, because we can. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model 37, 10, 20, 30, and now I'm gonna model those seven individual little um, units, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is my 37. So what do I have? Well, so far I have, and I'm gonna just use black on this, I have three tens and seven ones. Now, if I want to take one of these quick tens and cash it in for individual units, I would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten individual units. So now the question is, what do I have? Well, now I have two tens. They're right here. And now I have 17 ones. If I'm going to cash in that next quick ten right here, I could cash that in for 10 uh, units or 10 ones. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10. So now how many tens do I have? Well, I only have one 10. I'm gonna do that in black. One 10, it's right here. Here's the 10. Now how many ones do I have? I have 27. And one last one, if, if I wanted to, I could cash that remaining 10 in. I would end up with zero tens and 37 ones. So parents and teachers, this is the kind of flexibility that we're trying to develop in our students, the ability to mentally, at least, using their mathematical imagination, take a 10 and think of it as one unit, one big quick 10, or they can think of it as 10 separate individual units. And that's the kind of flexibility we're looking for. So here, this is, we're supposed to connect uh, matching pairs, all right? So here, I'm gonna look at this and I see that that is two tens and three ones. And the idea is I'm supposed to figure out which one of these has two tens and three ones. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna kind of speed this along a little bit and I can see that down here, I have two tens and I have three ones. So that means this guy connects to this guy. All right, uh, again, this, I have three tens and four ones. So that's three tens and four ones. And oh my goodness, where am I gonna see three tens and four ones? Well, I can see right here, here's a group of 10. And then here's two more tens. So that's three tens and four ones. So that means this connects with this. All right, now what I need to do is I need to go in and fill this in. So what is this? Well, this is two tens and this is 14 ones. And I need to fill this one in. I have one 10, and then how many ones? I have 13 ones, and that's where we're making our connection. In this case, one 10 and 13 ones connects with two 10s and three ones, and then three 10s and four ones connects to two 10s and 14 ones. Parents and teachers, I'm going really fast uh, because this video is for you, not specifically for the kids, but the idea is we wanna create that flexibility. Uh, parents and teachers, please make sure, uh, before moving on to the next lesson, let your students have that adequate time to develop an understanding of what's going on here, rather than just rushing to get the answer without the students fully understanding what the heck is going on. Here is more of the same where we're going to be connecting uh, the values on the left with the matching value on the right. Some real quick ones that I see right here, these guys go together. I can see that these guys go together and I can see that these guys go together. So parents and teachers, uh, I, I want you to make sure you understand how these are connected. How did I decide uh, what's going on? And if you don't understand, make sure you leave a comment in the, the space below on the video and uh, I'll reply to your comment. And the last one, Emmy says that 37, so there's our magic number, 37, is the same as 110 and 27 ones. Meanwhile, Ben says 37 is the same as two tens and seven ones. So now what they're asking us to do is to draw some quick tens to show who's correct, all right? So, um, we're going to start with, let's start, and there's a variety of ways we could start, but I'm going to start with 37, okay? And I'm going to start, I'm going to build that quick 10, and let's do it in brown. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is my model for 37. Now I'm going to start with Ben. He says two tens and seven ones. So let's see, do I have two tens? No, I have three tens. So if we wanted to, I would need to get down to two tens. That means I need to cash in one of these 
quick tens for 10 individual units. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to cash that in for 10 individual units. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now I have two tens. Now how many ones do I have? Ooh, I have two tens and 17 ones. Two tens and 17 ones. So it turns out Ben is not correct. Now we can go one step further and make sure that um, Emmy is correct. So we're going to model 37. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there is my model for 37, 3 tens and 7 ones. Now Emmy, she wants 1 ten and 27 ones. So that means we need to cash in two of these tens. I mean, yeah, quick tens for units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's, we see two tens, 17 ones. But then I'm going to cash this one in as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that wraps up. Let's see, first grade, module four, lesson 23, where we are interpreting two-digit numbers uh, as tens and ones, and we're getting all flexible, especially when it comes to uh, having more than nine in the ones column.